In this edition of American Railway, we focus on the area close to the eastern banks of the Mississippi River in Wisconsin, from Prescott, at the border with Minnesota in the north, to just across the state border at Savannah, Illinois. The first scenes in this program are next to the BNSF main through Trempilo. Then one camera is positioned at track level next to the river in Perot State Park, while the other made the steep climb up Brady's Bluff. The stunning view from the overlook there includes the Canadian National Track heading across the National Wildlife Refuge, bound for Maryland, and beyond to Wisconsin Rapids and Stevens Point. After that, we travel just south of Trempilo for some night scenes at La Crosse Amtrak Station. At the head of this 120 hopper southbound unit coal train was an Evolution Series 44AC leading an ST70 Mac number 9672 that still wears its Burlington Northern Executive livery. Distributed power at the tail is provided by SD70 Ace, number 9270. Fifteen minutes later, a short grain train hurried past with two B40-8W locos in charge. The second, number 519, retains its war bonnet paint scheme. Viewed from the South Park Road, the Trimpilo dumps into the Mississippi here beneath the railroad bridge. From Brady's Bluff in Perot State Park, looking across Trimpilo National Wildlife Refuge, a Canadian National Mixed Freight could be seen heading northeast, away from the BNSF route and the Mississippi. As a southbound BNSF stack train approaches, the city of Winona can be seen in the distance, across the river in Minnesota.
The Perot State Park includes the site of one of the earliest encampments by European explorers in the Upper Mississippi area. The park is named after a French explorer, Nicolas Perot, who wrote about this district. The park protects two state natural areas, Brady's Bluff Prairie and the Trempilo Mountain, the cone-shaped mound next to the Mississippi in the foreground hiding the train. This mountain is considered sacred by Native Americans of the region. When the train emerges from behind Trempilo Mountain, it will be revealed that it is hauled by a BNSF C44-9W in warbonnet livery and a CSX Transportation ES44AC-H number 882. CSX refer to the ES44AC-H more simply as the ES44AH. To be given the H for heavy designator, indicating increased maximum tractive effort, the locomotive has not only additional ballast weight, but is also equipped with steerable bogey trucks, adhesion control software, and GE's rail cleaner, which blows high pressure air onto the rails ahead of the sand nozzles mounted forward of the leading axle. This system increases the maximum tractive effort of each traction motor by up to 3,000 pounds, or 1,000 kilograms. That is 18,000 pounds for this locomotive. A Canadian Pacific Manifest is heading west through La Crosse Amtrak Station towards the bridges over the Mississippi into Minnesota. It is powered by an AC44CW and an ES44AC. The Cross Station was built in 1926 by the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul and Pacific Railroad. It was renovated in 1997 and is now listed on the National Register of Historic Places in Wisconsin.
This light engine is a rebuilt GP20C Eco. Due to their long, narrow noses, some rail fans call them aardvarks. Northwest from Trempilo, locations in Alma include the spectacular views from Buena Vista Park and near the marina on the bank of the river. Further northwest, we stop at the grade crossing by Wisconsin 25 before continuing to picturesque Pepin in the rain. This is the view from Buena Vista Park looking northwest. Lock and Dam No. 4 spans the river from Alma to Kellogg, Minnesota. Construction began in 1932 and it was placed in operation three years later. Southwest, the railroad snakes past two coal-fired power stations. BNSF No. 7031 on the head is an ES44 C4, which has only four traction motors on the outer axles of each bogey truck, instead of the usual six, one per axle. Is there a significance in the fact that it is paired with a CSX ES44AH, number 715, a heavy variant, with its additional tractive effort? Let's take a closer look. The power stations are owned by Dairyland Power Cooperative. The nearer brick structure is Alma Generating Station, which had five generating units. The first two, commissioned in 1947, and the third from 1951, were the first three to cease production at the end of 2011. Units four and five, commissioned in 1957 and 1960 respectively, completed the retirement of the plant in the fall of 2014. The filling in the BNSF sandwich is one of Norfolk Southern Heritage Units. SD70 Ace number 1067 honours Reading Lines, the B-Line service.
The lead loco is an AC44CW number 5677 with dash line number 4334 next to the train. After the hopper acting as a barrier vehicle, there were 95 crude oil tanks heading south. Further away in this view, the concrete power plant is the John P. Magit station, which began operation in 1979, generating 369 megawatts of electricity. Coal from Wyoming and Utah arrives by barge and by train. The hot side electrostatic precipitator at JPM is equipped to remove almost all particulate from the flue gas given off when the coal is burned. At last, a northbound train has come into view, with Warbonnet SD75I, number 8300, at the head. It will pass another southbound crude oil train, this time powered by two Norfolk Southern Jeevos and a BNSF-9.
Descending to track level, a southbound intermodal bounds past the marina. Like the most of this sun, the bad weather is about to close in. Behind the Jeevo in charge of these northbound empty taconite hoppers is an ST-70 Ace, number 9253.
We filmed the Dash 9 on point back in February 2012, when it was in a four loco consist hauling a unit grain train through Madrone, New Mexico, which appeared in volume 12 of this series titled Roadrunners, Pumpkins and Stacks. French brothers Pierre and Jean Pepin explored and traded in this area in the 17th century. Their family name became associated with the lake, and later the village laid out at the foot of the lake took on that name. Continuing the journey northwest, we reach Prescott, which is the most northerly point of Wisconsin on the Mississippi River, at the state border with Minnesota, which follows the St. Croix River north from there. As you can see, we selected a number of positions to film trains crossing the bridge across the border. BNSF heritage liveries count down 3 to 1 from the front of this train. ES44 DC Swoosh leads SD70 Mac Pumpkin, then the Heritage 1 C44 9W. These hoppers are used to transport iron ore pellets. Taconite is a low-grade iron ore, a sedimentary rock of which the iron content is finely dispersed magnetite. The ore is ground and the powdered magnetite separated out using powerful magnets. This powdered ore is then mixed with a clay binder and limestone flux to produce pellets that can be transported more easily. These iron ore pellets are also referred to as taconite so these hoppers are often called taconite hoppers.
The bridge spans the St. Croix River, which empties into the Mississippi flowing parallel to the bridge in the background of this view. A pleasure boat is approaching that is just too tall to fit beneath the bridge. The bridge was built in 1984 to replace the old swing bridge. It is of steel truss construction with the vertical lift central span. Total length is about 630 feet or 192 meters. It took about 40 seconds to raise the bridge fully and a minute or more to drop it gently back into position. Next, two GVOs power north, designated AC45 CCTE by Union Pacific, to denote computerized tractive effort. They are ferrying two pristine BNSF locos, a Jeep 50 and a rebuilt GP 28P. That BNSF livery appears to be a mixture of Heritage 1 and Heritage 3.
The following day, those two AC-45 CCTEs returned on a southbound manifest. As the afternoon sun breaks through at last, crude oil empties return north with an SD-70 Mac, an ES-44AC and a CSX C40-8W at the head.
Having crossed the Wisconsin southern state border into Illinois, the following scenes next to the Mississippi are in Savannah and from the dramatic overlook from Mississippi Palisade State Park. For these scenes, one camera is positioned here, but on the opposite side of the track, while the other on Division Street will be the first to capture northbound crude oil empties where a Jeevo is at the head leading to SD70 Max. We filmed the Mac coupled to the train once before at Wichita Falls in Texas, which appears in High Plains Freighter, volume 13 of the American Railway series. Having checked our records, we believe that this is the first time ever that we have filmed all three locos on a train previously. We filmed the ES-44 DC on the head at Vaughan, New Mexico, the ES-44 C4 number 6646 at Dallas, Texas, and the Dash 9 distributed power coming up on the tail at Pampa, Texas. At the Mississippi Palisade State Park, 
This is a view looking south towards Savannah and north towards Marcus and Arnold. Our other camera is further to the left on a rocky outcrop. More empty crude oil tanks returning north. Palisades is the term often given to steep cliffs on the banks of a river, an apt description for the Mississippi Palisades here. Besides the numerous trails popular with hikers, there are caves and dangerous sinkholes. Erosion has caused rock formations thought to resemble a native Indian head and two humanoid figures on the tops of the bluffs referred to as twin sisters. The intriguing beauty of the region was recognised by the US Department of the Interior designating it a national landmark in 1973. The next northbound has just rounded the bend in the distance. It is yet more empty oil tanks, this time hauled by a trio of CSX ES44AH heavy variants, numbers 3058, 3141 and 3140. The sight of some autoracs acts made a very pleasant change to oil tanks.
another northbound headed by another SD70 Mac, CSX number 4587, this time on a unit grain train, partnered with a C40-8W number 7863. After these four dash nines powered north, the weather deteriorated, so we travelled north towards the state border to catch another train of crude oil tanks that was passing through East Dubuk. A dash nine and an ES44 C4 are at the head, and an SD70 Mac provides distributed power at the tail.
we return to Wisconsin for the last section of this program. Beginning at the spectacular overlook in Wyalusing State Park, we follow the BNSF main north to locations at Lockendam Dam No. 9, Lynxville and Ferryville. This wonderful view from Wyalusing State Park looks down on the BNSF track crossing the Wisconsin River with the Mississippi in the background. A local manifest waits at Crawford to switch the connection with the Wisconsin and Southern Railroad which crosses the BNSF here. A train of taconite iron ore hoppers has just passed the manifest heading for the bridge. Some would advocate the use of Heritage 1 livery as worn by 1055 here. The manifest is drawing forward, taking possession of the single track main. In the 19th century, having been displaced from lands further to the east, the Munsee Delaware Indians settled in the area naming it Wyalusing, which means Home of the Warrior in the Lenape language. About eight minutes later, the locomotives run light engine via the connecting spur, making their way to the collection point. The 500-foot bluffs looking out over the river valleys are dotted with prehistoric Indian mounds. The Mounds Archaeological District of Wyalusing State Park is on the National Register of Historic Places, and the Wyalusing Hardwood Forest is a recognised national natural landmark. The pair of B40-HW locos, number 545 and 530, return with a rake of hoppers to be added to the front of their train. Altogether it took about 35 minutes to retrieve and attach the hoppers before the train could resume its journey south.
At Ports, the railway location just south of the bridge, a train of empty iron ore hoppers is waiting to continue north. It is powered by three locomotives. The war bonnet sandwiched by SD70 Max is an SD75i. To view the next four trains, one camera is positioned here by Lock and Dam number 9, while the other is a few miles further north at Lynxville. The crude oil trains seen in this program generally varied between 93 and 107 tank cars, plus barrier vehicles separating them from the locomotives. This train split the difference with 100 tank cars.
Behind the dashed nine on point, the CSX logo is designated ES40DC. The war bonnet is an SD75M with an ES44DC coupled to the train. Lockham Dam No. 9 was placed in operation in July 1937. It spans the river to near Harpers Ferry in Iowa. You'll catch a glimpse of it in the background of the next train, northbound empty oil tankers. One hundred and two oil tanks this time. The DPU is ES forty four DC number seventy eight sixty three. Linksville has a population of approximately 130. The village was named after the ship Lynx, which brought the first surveyors to the region.
An SD-70 Ace and a Jeevo on yet another oil train. This time the tail power is a Dash 9. Travelling north to Ferryville, we find, oh, more oil tanks. Dash 9's 5430 and 5472 are at the head. The DPU will be another Dash 9, number 5401. The village of Ferryville has a population of about 180. In the pioneer days of the 19th century, people crossed the river from here by ferry boat to Lansing, Iowa, their nearest place for business, giving this village its name. We hope you have enjoyed the beautiful scenery and varied motive power on this journey near the banks of the Mississippi and Wisconsin and across the state border to Savannah, Illinois. Thank you for joining us.